So in my lifetime, I have only loved a handful of girls. I definitely can tell you the entire list of the names throughout every grade I was ever in in of girls I liked or girls who liked me from kindergarten all the way through college and till today. But in terms of serious relationships, there's only been a few that have made my day. When I talk about this, I'm also talking about the fact that there, there is one that I love very much that I cannot talk about. And with my late spouse gone, I had the right to explore other things. I prayed another devout prayer a little later after uh, losing the one I love, and in walked that very person who filled every part of my request to God. And that's the one I can't talk about, because there's so many special circumstances with that. There's so many uniquenesses to that, but she is the caring one that I love. And if I could talk about it, if the Lord would allow me to talk about it, there'd be risk to her and her brood, and I cannot allow that. You see, there are different types of people in the world. There are lovers and there are fighters. There are hearts and there are liars. And in every world of men, there's always that girl who's an angel to someone. And my earth angel is the one that I love. My devil's advocate is another that I love. And openly, I laugh about this because I think God challenges us to love. In America, we have the right as men to go off and sow our oats and have wild times and make friends, and yet women get this double sword. That they think if you take the least bit of social or professional conversational interest in them, that you're hitting on them, and I find that so offensive, but on the other hand, I'm sort of marveled at that because I'm like, you know, I'm just this furry little guy, and you think that I'm attractive enough to tell me that you're married? Interesting. I appreciate that. Thanks for the validation. But the reality is that the one, women that I love are spiritual forces. And even my late spouse, who was Japanese, had her own spirituality that she shared with me every year. When we lived in Japan and we, when we came here, it was harder to do because there aren't as many temples and shrines for us to celebrate in the Midwest. We even talked about creating one. But we never quite got there. You see, in life we have moments of time to speak the truth about our life, but if we don't tell people about our lives, we're a lot safer. Because when we start to share stories, people want to investigate. They want to hear more. They want to gossip about it. They want to tell all storybook. And the answer is no. I had some marvelous times for over two months with a woman who was supposed to probably become my next wife. And openly, she fit me in every way. But there was a few parts of her that had to kind of work themselves out. And isn't it marvelous that the women that I love all had a particular number within their life? You see, the numbers of our life are sort of like numerology, but there are numbers in our life that are warning signs. And what's sort of intriguing to me is that the women that have cared for me and schooled me and educated me all have the same number in either a phone number or an auto plate or some other number on their life, like a birth date, that speak volumes to me from my study of numerology, but also from my understanding of the Lord's book of what they're supposed to do in my life and for my life. And they all have the same number. Most people are familiar with that number for how popular the verse is, but the amazing thing is that those people are marvelous liars. And they don't need to be with me. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And all three of the women that I have loved to date are talked about in my book, Soul Keepers. But isn't it interesting that the man who's trying to steal from me has deleted an interview I did on Soul Keepers on my own video channel? And isn't it unique that some of my business partners have their videos deleted too? But what I'd like to say to the little motherfucker who keeps invading my life as if he's got rights to me, you do have no rights to me, please put your rights back with you. Because I will not be enslaved by you, I will not be put into the sex trade by you, and I will not be continued to be harmed by you. Because Jesus Christ may be my savior, but Odin is the man who protects me, and at this time, motherfucker, you can't touch me.